Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today uh, we are going to start lecture number 31st and in this lecture we will continue the topic high level language uh, interface with the assembly language. So before going to start this lecture we will review what we did in 30th lecture. So in that lecture we discuss about why we need to link assembly language with the high level language programs. Uh, as we already discussed that high level languages uh, we can create complete projects and they hide all the details, uh, the low level details, what is un underlying architecture and something. Uh, we don't care about that in high level languages and it takes very less time to create a project in high level languages. Uh, uh, also, uh, the speed of the program is very slow. Uh, even in today's lecture, you will see uh, how can we speed up our program. And the size of the code is very large. And these two last things like slow speed and large size, you will realize uh, how we can achieve that one uh, in high level languages and how can we minimize this one in the assembly language. On the other hand, the assembly language programs the speed of the critical uh, code sections uh, if we want to write some functions or the procedures uh, we can write in assembly language uh, by our hand or by our requirement and then we can minimize the execution time and then next how can we access the non-standard uh, hardware devices which are not available or which you cannot directly access in the high level languages However, in assembly language, you can access them very easily. How can you write uh, the platform specific code? For example, if you want to write for the assemb uh, assembly code for the uh, Intel architectures and also for the Apple architectures, Mac architectures and so on. And how you can extend the high level language capabilities by using the assembly language. So these are the reasons we need to write or we need to integrate assembly language programs with the high level language programs. Then we will discuss about uh, the external, we also discuss about the external identifiers. Uh, what is the external identifier is nothing but a name uh, that has been placed in the modules object file in such a way uh, that the linker can make the name available to other program modules. For example, if we, uh, in the next slide you will see uh, that how we can define the procedure names uh, what are the naming conventions and so on uh, in when we use the std call uh, language specifier and when we use c language specifier so we already discussed in our previous lecture and the naming convention uh, this is nothing but the rules or the characteristics regarding uh, the name of a variable or a procedure how names or the names of the procedures or variables are written inside the object code so that they are available to the other programs uh, when you use std call c or other language specifiers uh, then we discuss about the calling conventions uh, this calling convention is nothing but it refers to the low level details about how procedures are called and uh, it determines the registers that must be preserved by the procedures means when you call uh, any procedure then which register should be preserved uh, or stack, stacked or written on the stack before calling the procedure and so on and the reason means it also determines how arguments are passed to the procedures means when you are calling a procedure then what is the rule to pass the arguments to the procedures and then it also determines the order in which arguments are passed by the calling programs to the procedures for example, some languages they call they pass parameters or pass arguments from left to right, and like std call and the c, they pass arguments from right to left. Means if you have multiple arguments, like uh, if we are calling a two, and you are passing two parameters like p one and p two, so p one will be stored first and p two will be stored second on the stack. So this is the way. Or some languages they start preserving these uh, parameters or arguments from uh, left to right and so on and also determines whether arguments are passed by value or by reference and so on 
so in case if they are passed by values then how you can save them and either register or you can directly access them from the stack and so on in the in the case when the arguments are passed by reference then how you are going to use uh, those reference values are like addresses uh, inside the registers or how you can access those elements which are stored on those memory addresses the calling convention also determines that how a stack pointer is restored after a procedure call for example uh, in the next slide you will see if we use dot means std call or maybe use we use c and so on so in the std call when you return then it automatically adds eight or some value so that it can restore uh, the area which is area of the stack which has been utilized however on the other hand C just leaves it to the calling program that how a stack is going to be managed and so on and then in the last uh, the calling convention determines that how functions will return those values so these are the calling conventions we covered in our previous lecture now after that you will see here the model directive in the model directive we use std call and also we use uh, the C language specifier so these two are being used um, most commonly we use std call and as we discussed that we will now use C specifier so if we are going to write a procedure like a2 and we are uh, passing two arguments 5 and 6 so they will be passed from last to first this is same for the uh, C specifier like first we will push 6 then we will push 5 and then we will call a2 so EBP and ESP we know that when we are calling this one uh, inside this uh, function or inside this procedure first uh, we will try uh, we will save all these parameters and then uh, we will just uh, st uh, store the EBP and ESP uh, stack pointer inside the EBP and then before that one we will use uh, we will push this EBP value and this EBP value will be used to access the uh, stack parameters like the the five and six whatsoever the number of parameters we are we have used or we have passed uh, or whatsoever the arguments have been passed inside the uh, from the procedure now we can use like EBP uh, plus eight uh, plus twelve and so on so to access these uh, these arguments which we are passing and the return eight uh, will clean up the stack and the name uh, we know that if we use std call then uh, the function name will be created in object file like underscore name and the ampersand sign or at the rate of sign and then there should be number which will be automatically added uh, and after this return and so on so it will clean up the stack however on the other hand everything is same for the C specifier other than these two uh, one thing is about the uh, a2 uh, so everything is same in the C specifier other than these two one is the uh, add ESP H and then second one is the a2 the name uh, of this procedure in C specifier uh, it uh, pushes or push all or saves all these arguments which we are passing and from right to left uh, last to first and so on so it will push 6 and then it will push 5 and then it will call a2 now when we are calling a2 and when we will return back what will happen that aid uh, the calling programs responsibility is to clean up uh, the stack so here you can see here that we are uh, by ourselves we are adding it to the ESP so that uh, if we stored like 5 and 6 inside the stack uh, we can clean this area and then the name of this procedure will be like underscore uh, add to and there'll be no ampersand sign and nothing else like after this ampersand sign and so on then in the end we discuss about how we can use the inline directives or inline uh, assembly code inside C++ so here you have seen that we use underscore ASM and we can write a statement C uh, assembly statement and so on in case of block uh, underscore ASM and we have the uh, curly open and closing bracket and inside this open and closing bracket we can write uh, multiple statements 
uh, assembly statements that will be used inside uh, C++ or Visual C and so on. Now, what we will discuss in this lecture, there are a few things uh, the, which include this whole course outline. The first thing that we will discuss in, during this lecture is function call overhead. You will see that uh, when we are writing a function inside C and we are calling this function inside the main program and so on, what type of overhead incurs uh, when we are using uh, that C program and so on. So we will do one example and uh, we will go to disassembly and see uh, what type of overhead has been produced. Then the next one is uh, when we link uh, to visual C++ programs, uh, what do we need to uh, link uh, any of the assembly procedure to visual C++ and so on. And then the third topic uh, that will be used or that will be discussed here is uh, how we can optimize the code. So first of all we have loop optimization example and so on. Uh, how can we optimize this loop? Second thing is finder example. Uh, I will step by step tell you how you can create a finder example or how you can impl implement a whole uh, project inside Visual C++ and so on. So here you can see uh, function call overhead. Now, there are so many include files here in Visual C++ project. So, there can be any name of this project and so on. Here we have buffer size. This is 2000 and so on. So, we are going to create a character buffer, uh, character array of 2000 elements. And then count, unsigned integer count is the total number of uh, uh, values whatsoever the count will be there and we have unsigned character is encrypt code and so on. So it will define an unsigned character of type uh, unsigned character value for the encrypt code and so on and we will use any code. Uh, this is almost similar what we did in our previous lecture. So here we will, this will print the value that you can encrypt code uh, from 0 to 255 and for example here if I print or uh, enter 25 so this 25 will be stored inside encrypt code. Now we are going to open two files. Uh, here inside the book you will find example that we can use arguments here, command line arguments. So if we use command line arguments, then you can uh, uh, at the runtime, for example on C prompt, when you are executing your program, you can write the name of the program. Uh, for example, this program name is um, encrypt or something. Then we have source file and then we have destination file and so on. So these two will be command line arguments and they will be treated here as an input and output file. But uh, for the simplicity, I've used the uh, plain names, direct names which are in the current directory, for example, plane1.txt, this plane1.txt is going to be open in a binary format and so on and the uh, object that we are going to use is name is the uh, n file, uh, is the if if stream and of stream and so on and n file is, oh, sorry, the object which we are going to use is called the in file and out file and so on. So these two will be used here, you can see uh, in file dot read so we can use buffer and buffer size so buffer is the array buffer size is the size of the buffer that we are going to read from the file and so on and this will continue as long as you are going to uh, use uh, as long as the there is no end of file and of this plane one dot txt so we can get the number of characters that have been successfully read from this uh, file so we can say in file dot g count. So the total number of uh, characters which I mean read. Then we are going to call a function. Now the main main thing happens here. We are calling a translate buffer function. This translate buffer should be somewhere in header file, somewhere in other file, and so on. So we are calling this translate buffer uh, function. This function is already been defined. We are passing three arguments. First argument is the array or the buffer that we are we want to encode then we have count the number of characters the third one is the encrypt code 
uh, the code which we are going to use to um, uh, use the as an exclusive R with the buffer. So if we use exclusive R, then definitely we will get some uh, some encrypted file or encrypted characters and so on. And then it will be stored inside the buffer. And then what we'll do, we will are going to store the buffer and the count inside the write uh, and inside the out file and so on. I Means cipher one dot txt will have this one. Now we have discussed everything whatsoever is already here. Now we will see what is the overhead when we call uh, the function or when we call this uh, procedure. Here you can see. So at this point you can see that there is a sufficient overhead. Uh, so move z, uh, move zx, so uh, zero field and so on means we are uh, extending the sine extended uh, sine extended byte, uh, sine extended um, uh, value. Uh, EBP plus the sine extended value and we are going to put in EX and so on and this is going to be stored somewhere else because we are passing these parameters then we are calling or uh, we are going to store the second parameter so EB, um, EBP plus something this one and we are going to move this one then we are going to push the second parameter then load effective address of the third parameter and so on so all these three parameters have been pushed inside the stack and then we are calling the translate buffer. So when we are calling this, first we push all these three parameters, then we call the translate, translate buffer. And when we return back from this translate buffer function, you can see we are going to add something, some value inside the ESP to remove the space uh, from the, or uh, remove the uh, stack space which has been used by moving all these parameters. Now this is the overhead uh, for when we are calling. Uh, however, when we are going to see inside this one, inside the uh, translate buffer, where there'll be no, there'll be not that much uh, overhead inside this area, because we know that we have already written in assembly. However, if you want to see here, uh, inside the function, when we are going to uh, call this function, uh, then inside this function we are going to push EBP definitely we have to push EBP uh, because we are using this EBP as an stack pointer and so on and then what we will do we are trying to uh, push some other variables like here you can see we are going to push EBX we are going to push ESI EDI and so on so there are few things which we are going to push and then uh, we are going to repeat all this whatsoever we are going to uh, perform this operation and so on and before that leaving we are going to pop everything from the uh, function now there is a sufficient overhead here you can see that we have to push um, most of the registers even before calling so here uh, the code for this area assembly code is not uh, inside these two boxes only the code that what we are going to push and what we are going to pop when we are calling the procedure and we are returning from the procedure to the main program. So there is sufficient number of registers even though these registers are not being used. So these are also being pushed inside the stack and popped from the stack. So it will consume multiple number of cycles of this uh, of the uh, microprocessor which will waste or waste the or which will create the delay or which will slow the speed and here you can see that uh, there's automatically number of statements uh, they are being inserted uh, in the com by the compiler to uh, set up the EBP and then the next is uh, it is going to save uh, a standard set of register whether even they are used or even they are not being used or modified by the procedure and so on so this is the overhead which is going to be encountered However, you will not feel this overhead uh, when you are calling. So these are uh, when you are one, once or two times or three times you are calling this function. At this time, you will not feel this overhead. However, in case if you are calling this function thousands of times, at that time you will feel the difference or feel that uh, there is some delay. Uh, in the end of this lecture, you will see when we are going to call a function and when we are counting the time. When you will count the time, you will see that starting time and the end time for the C function and starting time and end time for the assembly function. 
the same function has been used and uh, the simplified same function has been used for the C and also for the assembly language. You will see which one uh, is going to um, perform more better. Here is to avoid this overhead what we are going to do uh, what you can do is you can insert the, in the inline code uh, uh, it will create more efficient program if you insert the same inline code here uh, in the main file and so on so it would be better if you call or uh, if you use the inline code uh, of the function uh, what, whatsoever you are going to define in a separate file either header file or other CPP file and so on so to avoid this function call overhead this is the best approach that you can do now the linking assembly language to C++ or Visual C++ uh, there's, there's a basic structure first uh, this basic structure includes two modules the first module uh, is written in assembly language and this contains the external procedure so this is the first module and the second module contains the C or C++ or Visual C code that starts and ends the program and so on and this module also calls the uh, the assembly the external procedure which you are going to define in assembly language in a separate file so this is the uh, way you can call uh, any of the assembly language function or uh, the other ways you can write an in inline inline function so instead of using inline we, we just prefer to write functions or procedures in C or uh, other languages because we use modular approach uh, to uh, to un easily debug and easily understand the program structure and so on so the C++ modules uh, there are two things one is the external qualifier and then the specifier so in the C++ modules uh, it's the external qualifier to the external assembly language function prototype so here you can see the word the keyword external extern should be there uh, to identify that uh, this is an external function that we are calling here and the C specifier must be included or the STD call or C must be included depends which model directive you are using in the second part for example if you are using here in the in the first module in assembly language uh, for example the model something for so whatsoever and then you are using the C or maybe you are using the STD call so just be careful because as we already discussed that C or STD call uh, the return type is different uh, so or the garbage collection or how the uh, space inside the stick is being uh, freed up and so on so you have to be very much careful so here there should be X identifier or the C language specifier should be here and then the function name and the parameter list uh, it, so the C specifier must be included to prevent the name decoration by the C++ compiler and this is the example you can see here so now we will discuss about the name decoration uh, it is also known as a name mangling so in high level language compilers uh, they do this to uniquely identify the overloaded functions a function such as for example this one integer and array sum and we have the pointer and then we have the uh, value of this count uh, it would be exported as a decorated name that encodes the run type and that would be exported as a uh, decorated name that encodes the uh, return type function name and the parameter types for example here you can see it will be decorated like integer uh, rsm p integer and integer and so on so the problem with this name decoration is that the C++ uh, compiler assume that your assembly fun language functions name is decorated is in the same way so the C compiler tells the linker to look for the this name uh, inside the object file when we are going to compile our main program and so on so that is the reason that I already mentioned that you must have to be very much careful when you are using the name specifiers and so on when you are calling external functions uh, so C++ C++ compilers vary in the way they decorate function names so there are multiple of C++ compilers for some Borland C and so on then we have C, C or C++ compilers then we have Visual C and so on so you must have to be very much careful 
which compiler uh, C or C++ compiler you are using and they have different decorating uh, decoration ways so it is very necessary uh, to use uh, to consider the name decoration here is a very basic example that you will see when we will do this project uh, for example here we have two files one file is clear.asm and main.cpp and so on there are two uh, files as we know that for this clear.sm we have to define the uh, we have to customize the uh, the project that we are using the mesm32 or we are using the ml.exe file to compile this one and in assembly language or the uh, visual studio they are already specified that how that, that will be compiled so you have to check this sign I will show you when we will do the example and so on here we are using very simple function to give you uh, like an idea how we can use this one for example here is a function which is wide type and the name of this function is clear there are no parameters inside this function so in this uh, function for example uh, we have we are using the C++ specifier uh, sorry C specifier and in the main function we are calling this uh, clear function or clear procedure and so on so this is very basic very simple uh, C uh, C language uh, integration with the assembly or assembly language integration with the C visual C++ on the other hand if you will see this uh, ASM clear dot ASM file uh, in this function you will see here you will see the function that uh, the procedure the name is clear the name should be similar name and so on and we are going to clear three uh, registers we are using model flat and language specifier C there is no stack is being used uh, no data is being used and inside the code we have only three statements uh, one procedure there are four statements three for clearing the registers and the last uh, last one is written instru uh, instruction to exit from the procedure and so on so this is very simple procedure now you can compile both uh, we have just used how we can compile so if you can compile and you will see that there will be no errors uh, there is another uh, procedure that we have created uh, is called the uh, add to procedure so here you can see we are using uh, 486, 586, or you can use 386 and so on to use the flat and the std call. Previously, we have used the C specifier. Uh, now we are using std call to give you the idea uh, to match the naming convention and so on. In Visual C++, if you are calling an assembly code which has the language specifier as a std call, then here you have to use underscore or uh, integer is the is the name or the return type sorry integer is the return type and here we specifically mention that we have external C external function and we are using the std call and it is add two and it has two parameter uh, two arguments which are being passed and here <coughs> we are using a study call here option cache map none and so on we have the prototype this prototype will be used uh, that we are using a function which has two argument which is which will accept two parameters and so on and two arguments will be passed here you can see a and b and if you just go through the add to procedure uh, what we are going to do we are going to say that argument one will be moved in eax argument two will be added here and we are going to return so if we return back definitely the result will be stored somewhere like we have the C so return type is for example C if we say C is equal a to a comma B then the whatsoever the value is inside the EAX it will be saved inside the C or whatsoever the uh, fun value variable you are using here and we can print this one and we can return here so these are two files one is the a2 and second one is the uh, a2 assembly file so this one is the assembly file and this one is the uh, 
visual c++ file or dot cpp and so on here at this point you will see that when we are using the uh, assembly language code in this assembly for example if you just see the whole function that how this whole function will work that when we push uh, when we call this function it will push ebp and esp and so on it will push EBP and move ESP in the EBP and so on. Then this EBP will be used to uh, get the arguments or um, retrieve the arguments and so on. So we say argument one is uh, the address is being passed to EX and then uh, double word pointer to the argument two, whatsoever the value is, it is being added to the EX. And we have the leave uh, return instruction that is substituted by two, leave and return. On the other hand, inside this calling procedure, we are going to call a procedure, the name of this procedure is this one, underscore 82 at the rate of 8 and so on. And here uh, we have the uh, push ECX. If we define integer before this 82 function, then you can see that whatsoever the uh, variable is there, we are going to pass the value of EAX and so on. Uh, this is the disassembly uh, when we are using the A2 procedures. So be careful when you are using the naming uh, the uh, language specifiers and so on. So now you have seen two examples. One is for the simple without passing in parameters and we have used only very simple C specifier and then after that you have seen that if we are using the std call then you have to use std call same uh, explicitly mentioned inside the function but before that you have to uh, use c to mention that you are using and uh, the external function and so on now for example if you want to use the if you want to optimize c++ uh, code we want to use assembly language however on the other hand we want to optimize the c++ code how we can do that first for example we have the finder example uh, you can see finder example now one thing that we will do here there are uh, two things we will do first we will write the same uh, code in the C++ function and then the next one will be the assembly function our procedure assembly function or procedure these two procedures are same similar procedures uh, and what we are going to do these procedures are finder a procedure or finder example for example inside this one we will define two functions or two procedures they will return boolean data type uh, that we have an array of 1000 or 2000 elements and we will enter one value so this value will be searched from whole uh, array before going to search we will see either is there any is there any uh, we will assign random variable random values inside all those elements and then we will see either our uh, value is inside the array or not then you will check that the c++ or c simple c function to find an array and the same function inside the assembly language means the 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 function which we are coding by ourselves what is the time difference uh, there should be some time difference as we have claimed that our fun the assembly function is more faster than the uh, high level language function so find out how to make a c++ compiler pro proceed so we have to find out uh, how to make your c++ compiler uh, produce an assembly language source listing and so on and here we will also optimize the loops for speed and so on and then we will use the hardware level IO for optimum speed and then other statements to speed up this whole um, find array function, find array procedure and so on. So first we will create a find array project. What we will do, we will run Visual C++ and create the find array uh, project name, uh, project with the name find array. And then what we will do, we will add CPP source files to the project. Uh, for example, the name is main.cpp. Inside this one, uh, this file should contain the C++ main function that will call the find array. That will call both uh, the find array procedures. So we will try to uh, write them in different names 
and we will uh, there will be some difference to differentiate but the code will remain same uh, one will have the assembly uh, second one will have the C++ very simple C++ not the complicated one now after that we will add a header file and the naming convention should be inside means uh, we will see that how we are going to define the external external C for both for C++ and for the assembly language we will define and find error.h uh, the project uh, inside the project uh, we will call it inside the project and uh, we will call in the functions and also the source files and so on and we will create the file that is num named as find array.asm and the find array.cpp and so on and these two files will have the this will have the C++ function this will have the same uh, find array function in assembly language so we will place them in project directory and then we will this file will contain the source code for this procedure we will build and run the project now before going to do that one I will give you uh, the introduction what will be inside those uh, uh, files like in find array.cpp this implements a linear search of an array uh, of long integers and so on here you can see this will accept three parameters so we have array of type long and we have the count so we will get the name of the array here as an parameter as a parameter we have the value that we are searching here we have the count uh, that we are going to use so all these very values are being passed as a argument and they will be accepted as a parameter in the find array uh, procedure or function this function will return value so there are two return types or uh, return values uh, the return type is boolean so if the uh, if array has the uh, for example um, we are going to start from zero to all the number of elements if the array has element which has the same value as the search value which we are going to provide then it will return value true and throughout this whole if we are going to uh, find any value otherwise it will return value false and so on and then we have the uh, header file uh, find a uh, find a double r dot h header file so we define two uh, procedures or two functions we define that external c and return type is boolean and this is the assembly find array assembly version long and long array and long count these parameters are almost these they are similar parameters and the only with the name is different return type is boolean and we are using the here the find array this is asm find array here is the uh, find array so the parameters are simple so we will include this header file inside the main project and as, as well inside the uh, find array dot cpp and so on here is the find array procedure uh, inside the assembly language so this is the name of this file is find array dot asm here we use the c naming uh, language specifier first we define the prototype this is the search well which will be received as a parameter then array pointer then we have the count so th what does this procedure do this procedure uses the uh, edi and it has a the parameters like search well and the there are three parameters the same parameters which we have used in our prototype true and false there we are assigning the values 1 and 0 and so on so search well is moved in eax count is in ecx because and the array pointer is inside the edi so what we are going to do we are going to uh, use this uh, function or the statement that is called the repeat not equal to scast scasd so what what will happen this statement will completely search for the whole uh, it compare the eax uh, with the double word at the edi and the it will set the status flag so in case this whole statement will do everything we don't need to perform the loop this is the more concise one so this will st statement will search this eax inside this whole edi and 
for the time period for the number of counts is like whatsoever the number of counts or number of items are there. So it will search the whole uh, double word array for the ECX times and the EEX is the value and EDI is the pointer. So in case if it has been found then it will jump to uh, 0 so it will return true or return true so move AL value as true otherwise it will move AL with the value as uh, false so uh, otherwise it will come here to return false and short exit means it will come here so short is the that it is in the same uh, segment and so on so it will jump here to the exit and inside exit we are going to return back so here this ASM find array is the simplest one uh, as you have seen that we have used the uh, the more simplest one inside the assembly language this one is also simplest one inside the assembly language so there are two files one is the find ASM find array dot uh, ASM second one is find array dot CPP third file is called the find array or find, find a double r dot header file where we define this uh, external uh, specifier and so on and then this is the project uh, this is the main file here you can see we have so many include files we include this header file we are using the name space uh, standard and so on so we don't need to use this std before the cout and other functions which we are using so <clears throat> here we define an array we have one constant uh, the constant name is array size loop so now we are calling this function so many times we are calling this function so many times like uh, for example loop size is um, is like one so we are calling this uh, loop or uh, we are searching inside this array for like one million times and so on so what will happen we will see the difference between the speed because if you call this only one time search so 10,000 elements is nothing it will search within seconds and you will feel that uh, very minor difference however if you will call this function multiple times or thousand times or million times then you will see uh, how does this affect the speed and so on and here we are going to uh, define an array uh, find error so long array uh, of type array size so there will be 10,000 elements inside the array and we are assigning a random number to all the elements uh, of this array of type long and so on then we need long value for the search well or for this variable so we want to search this value inside the array elements 10,000 array elements and then we are going to define the time so this is the time header file you will see uh, in the main file we have the time uh, included uh, we have included time header file and so on there are two variables start time and end time so first uh, what we will do we will ask for enter value that we want to search C in will get the value it will print for some value that please wait uh, this will take between 10 to 30 seconds it depends uh, on different machines for example if you are using Pentium 2 then it may take less uh, Pentium 2 it will take longer time or Pentium 4 or co quad core and so on core, core, uh, uh, core i5 core i7 and so on so this time depends however you will feel the difference so it will print some message now what we are going to do first we are going to call the C++ function and before that we will print the message uh, we will get the time starting time call the function C++ function and we will get the end time so we will find the difference how many seconds is the difference and we will print this one then what we will do we will find uh, we will call the assembly function but before calling assembly function we will try to uh, we will get the system time call the assembly function and then get the system time and find the difference so first is when you are calling the uh, the C++ function first we get the time uh, for the start time it will get the time uh, starting time whatsoever the system time current time is then we'll say found is equal to false so we are going to uh, search for integer so 
loop sizes like 1 million and so on. So we are calling this ar find array which is written in C++ for 1 million times and so on. Even though if we even if you don't find for example, but we are calling this array 1 million times to see the time difference. And when this function will complete its execution, we are going to get the time or the current time and so on. So we have two times, start time and end time. We will find the difference here. So the elapsed CPP time is something this one, seconds, found is equal either 0 or 1 whatsoever in case if you find something, find the value or not. And the same thing happens here, we are going to call assembly function and the assembly function will uh, be passed with the same number of parameter, uh, same number of arguments and we are calling one million times and the same thing is here because found is equal false and so on. So the time, starting time and ending time and it will give you the end time and so on. So this is the project that we will create and you will see uh, the output like this one, for example, uh, enter the value to find, I uh, entered for example one and then it will say please wait. Uh, this will take like between 10 to 30 seconds and so on. So elapsed time for CPP, uh, time is equal 62 seconds and found is equal zero. Elapsed time for assembly is 34 seconds and found is equal zero and so on. So these are the few few things are how you can call a procedure, how you can speed up your procedure and so on. So you will see all those examples in assembly language. So now we are going to program uh, whatsoever the examples you have seen in assembly language and then you will feel the difference or uh, you will experience how you can call functions or procedures in assembly language, how you can pass parameters and see uh, if you are not going to define an assembly language function and you are using the C++ function, what is the overhead that will be incurred or occurred when you are using the C++ function. Okay, so now we are going to start with the Visual Studio uh, 2010. Here we will create new project. Uh, this is Win32 console application and the directory where we will store is the CSC221 lecture 31 and the name of this project is lecture 31 example 001. This should be next. This is empty project. We will finish this one and then uh, before going to start, we will copy some files, uh, like we need three, four files here, we will copy and we will transfer them inside the uh, example directory. So here we will save them. So we have copied like cypher1.txt and cypher1.txt is like hello and some explanation marks and so on this is example file dot 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 and so on and translate dot uh, sorry in the plane one dot uh, text file there should be some information which will be written by the uh, code and then we have two files translate dot h and encode dot cpp so these are the two files one is header file so here you can see c uh, translate uh, header is shown here or dot .h file and cpp. So what we will do here, we will add these two files. Uh, for example, if I say add, add existing items, uh, this is translate dot .h and control and I click. So I'm holding control key and I have already selected uh, translate dot .h and then I, I already pressed control key and selected the uh, encode dot .cpp. So if I add so translate.h is added here. So there is translate buffer, uh, the size. Uh, so we have buffer and then unsigned count, unsigned character, e character and so on. And then we have this uh, underscore, double underscore, ASM and so on. So this is the uh, way you can encode whatsoever you read from this, whatsoever the parameter you are passing here. So till the number of counts, the elements inside the buff will be exclusive odd with the E character and so on. So AL has this one and then you are, pass, you are going to exclusive or all the ESI uh, 
where ESI register is pointing and pointing and so on. If we just go to the uh, CPP, you can see we have included .translate.h. So our main uh, file, our main function is inside here. We have defined like buffer size is equal to 2000 and buffer is here. We have count, we have byte, uh, which we want uh, exclusive R. It will be, the message will be printed. It will get the character for the, or uh, the number for the encrypt code, C in, and it will convert it inside the, uh, this encrypt code um, in such a way so that we can use it as an exclusive R. Two files are going to be opened ifstream.in file plain text plain one dot is txt and this one is in binary and so on second one is also in binary and so on cipher one it will print one message the reading plain text and creating the cipher one dot txt and so on and this will continue uh, until we do not finish reading from this uh, whole file and then it will get the count or the number of uh, characters that have been read or number of bytes that have been read successfully from the uh, in file and in file is pointing to the plain one dot txt then we are calling this function this function will save or encrypt whatsoever the information inside the buffer and it will save inside the out file and return so on so before going to compile what we have to do we have to right click because um, uh, you can directly use this one uh, project build project so it has successfully built and if I run this one so it will ask you that which uh, number you are going to use for example if I use 24 and it will do everything so it will encode whatsoever was in the plain text it will encode in the cipher one so this is inside the cipher one I copy this one inside the plain one so this is inside the plain one I just save and turn this off turn this off and so on so now we have cipher one inside this one uh, and plan one here so plan one I just copied everything inside cipher and I'm just going to delete whatsoever is here so I just save this one I just saved here and run this project again if I run this project again it will ask 24 if I press enter so it must have been sorry I have to close this one open the cipher one so in the cipher one now you can see this hello this is an example and so on so here what you have, what we have seen is that we are going to create a function external function we are calling this function um, if you want to see the what is the overhead what is the overhead that has been incurred so what we are going to do we are going to call in a step by step manner and here you can see uh, at this point we are calling this translate buffer we are calling this translate buffer if I say go to disassembly then translate buffer is here and uh, we have the uh, this for this translate buffer we have this one statement then we are passing this first parameter then second parameter then third parameter then we are calling and this is done by the assembly language by itself so all these statements are being used by the assembly language when we are calling function I just um, close this one disassembly and I just open the translate.h and if I just okay so registers are here so I just put registers here and I just translate or go to disassembly so this is almost similar Here's, here you can see ESI move ESI double word move ECX double word and so on this is the statement this is the code which is being generated 
this is the statement this is the code which has been so it's almost similar whatsoever the number of statements you have used the same code is being generated now here EBX just see have we used EBX no we did not use EBX we use EBP so we are going to push and in the end we are going to pop EBP but we are using not using EBP and uh, EBX and so on we are using the um, EDI so we're going to store EDI and so on and we are going to pop EDI and so on this is automatically done by the um, <coughs> our visual C++ so this type of overhead will be automatically added inside the function that you are going to define in C++ uh, and so on even though this is inline function inline code which we are going to add however the best practice is when you are calling a function which is written in C++ and even in this C++ there is uh, inline code so what we need to do we just copy this one and you can put it here inside the uh, file so this is the same code which we are using for the calling and so on the function so this will give you more better result uh, more faster result compared to the uh, previous function even for one or two time calls it will give you the similar result so uh, there's no need to worry about that one uh, if you're calling it one or once or twice but however if you want to have simulations or something uh, which consumes more uh, uh, number of cycles of this um, microprocessor so just try to write an efficient code so this is one example I just uh, stop this one I don't want to save uh, this one because I just encoded here I just close this project and then we are going to open a new project so this project is about the uh, clear register so this is the first project where we are going to use how we can call so file new new project is the when 32 console application name is the uh, lecture 31 example 002 and the next is empty project we just finish this one and inside this one we will copy all the files like for clear register we need main function and we when main program or main.cpp and we need clear.asm so this is the simplest function or simplest program which is calling the uh, assembly code or assembly function so well, how we can we can just add uh, existing items main and clear we can add you can see clear.asm so model is 5 or 6 for example flat C stack data code so it will it is very simple uh, it is going to call a procedure or going to tell a procedure name of this procedure is clear we are defining this procedure there are three registers we are going to clear uh, EAX, EBX and ECX and so on and in the main.cpp you will find uh, that we are calling an external procedure uh, we are not going to use any header files external procedure convention is naming convention or sorry the language specifier is C and wide and clear and so on if you are going to have multiple then definitely you have to use the uh, like the block statement and so on however we have only one so we are using only one function so this is okay for this one or for separate function you can use external C uh, though both with the function name and so on here we just save this one however you can look at this one that clear.asm is assembly code and main.cpp is a C++ code it is easy to um, compile the CPP however for the assembly code you cannot compile directly inside the um, Visual C++ so you have to set the uh, customize your pro project and so on just for for sake 
uh, of clear t you can build the solution so here you can unresolved external symbol underscore clear defined and function main name because uh, this file will generate underscore clear and so on however it did not generate so this is the unresolved one because there is no object file for this one uh, for example if what we are going to do uh, if we are going to this is the so this is the failed one if I write or if I build customization if I say mesm targets and provision whatsoever the build customization is there so now you this will use the uh, ml.exe to uh, perform compilation for this one build customization okay so now here you can see we have set this uh, build customization for the mesm32 first then we have added uh, these two files clear.sm so this is more important when you are going to enter the uh, clear.asm file uh, this is very important because this will be used to perform the compilation of this CPP, uh, ASM file and so on and if we just go through these all these properties here uh, there's no uh, any other so there's no common properties there general properties the same for this one mesm the general properties are still we, we are not including any files so there is no include path and so on and if I just compile this one so just build solution so one has been updated for example if I say uh, build or rebuild solution so it has rebuilt rebuild all one success zero failed and so on and we have main.cpp this is main cpp file if I just run this file uh, in F10 so first statement it will start from here so now it will in, uh, run this clear so in the clear we are going to clear one EAX EBX and then the third one is the ECX so ECX has already been zero zero and so on so it has already been clear and so on and then it will exit from the main program so this is the very simple program uh, we did not add anything else we just uh, what you have to do first you have to create a file project or create a project just build customization mesm target should be checked they should be okay and then you have to add two files so to check this one either this one has will work or not here right click in properties when you will click the properties here you will see the macro uh, Microsoft macro assembly and so on if it is it will show you uh, here you can see uh, the command line that ml dot let's see no logo and Z and so on it will already generate the target file and the object file here so there is object file here it will create it will be placed inside the uh, the code or the project and so on so this is very simple one how you can call this external uh, procedure now we are going to call uh, create another project we just close this one we start another project so be careful I will just repeat all those steps the name of this project is uh, lecture 31 example 003 next this is empty project we are just going to finish this one right click on this one build customization mesm32 this should be checked this should be okay and then we are going to add few files but before that we want to add so add two is a procedure there are two files we copy them we add them here uh, we just paste it here so we paste this one here add files existing item add two and add2.asm and so on so we just add two is the cpp file this is the main file so we have the stdio so we are using external c integer is the return type and so on 
STD call is the uh, convention that will be used here inside the uh, H2 and so on. So it's, it will be like integer integer underscore underscore std call a2 and so on then we are going to pass three parameters uh, two par two arguments a is equal to b is equal to three and c will have the output of this a2 and this a2 project is uh, add to procedure is inside the uh, this file for example here we are using uh, 486 dot dot model std call cast map none this is the pro prototype and here is the actual procedure so the actual procedure is very easy so this is when you are going to compile by using uh, the Microsoft assembly language uh, uh, separately I just remove this one so these are the three lines that will be inside the code so a2 procedure there are two arguments two will be passed or two arguments will be passed and it will return type if I right click here and if I see properties you will see macro assembler see it, it is good to go because when the properties show Microsoft macro assembler means you have already linked uh, the macro assembler for this project so that it will be used to compile this add2.asm so add2.asm will have this procedure this procedure will be called two parameters will be passed and the parameter the first parameter whatsoever the parameter is will be added to the second parameter and result will be stored in the EX and the we can save the result somewhere else uh, and first I just build this one build the solution so it is successful I just uh, run in step by step manner and then you will see so we are starting with this one um, integer a is equal to it has been saved somewhere integer b is equal c is equal something then we are calling a2 then c is equal to a2 a comma b so here you can see b is equal 3 c is equal and a2 is uh, has two parameters unsigned uh, integers and so on we are calling them and now you can see here the eax has the value and if I just go to the disassembly this one the procedure so push EBP and push all these things and we have argument we have written type we are going to perform it so this is disassembly for your project uh, for your assembly code and if I disassembly this code the SM C++ code go to right click go to disassembly so here first we are going to have integer a is equal to so move uh, double word pointer uh, a comma two and so on so two will be passed here to this in this address of this a and three will be passed or uh, moved to the b and c will be assigned with zero now before calling this one we are going to save these two uh, registers eex and ecx and we are calling uh, a two uh, this a2 is with the at, rate, at the rate of sign because we are using std call convention so if I just show the uh, show symbol names I just remove the symbol names and so on so here you will see the uh, we are calling this a2 so this a2 calling will have uh, we are calling this one I have removed all these um, symbols if I just show these symbol names then you will see that how this procedure is being uh, called from the object file and uh, what is the name of the procedure that will be used in the object file and so on so when we are going to say that uh, after calling this procedure we know that whatsoever the values inside C so EAX will be so moved inside the C and so on so we have the value in EAX that will be moved inside the C so we know that uh, the C++ note that the value will be saved in EX and it will be moved inside C and it will print the C so this is disassembly for the a2.cpp if I just run F10 again or a step over if we just go to this one here you will see 5 uh, inside this one um, the command prompt you will see the value 5 so it is the result 
uh, of this code and then it will return one and so on so this is the example where you can see that we have used a very simple code or very simple function is called a2 a comma b there are two parameters that that have been passed so this is one of the simplest example you can call uh, the function which is in the main do I mean the a2 dot assembly and so on and it will be called in C++ and we have defined that one now we have the last project uh, we have uh, used uh, we have studied during this one we are going to create this project so this is the Win32 console project lecture 31 example is 004 if we say next this is empty project we just finish this one right click build customization there should be measurement 32 okay so before going to aid we just copy all the files which are needed for this one uh, except writing everything copy So we have pasted this one inside the uh, lecture 30, lecture underscore 31, example 4. And then there's a subdirectory lecture 31, example 4. So we paste it here. Now we are going to call the all those files or add files inside the project. Right click on project, add existing items, find array, find array, header file, find array underscore main, find array dot assembly, as our CPP and so on. So we have assembly, header file, main file and CPP. So header file is here. Inside this header file you can see we have a function which has been defined. Its written type is boolean and uh, it is a C, is using the C convention find ASM, find array long n, there are three arguments that will be passed and is accepting three parameters. Similar function inside the C++ version. So first we just save this one. Uh, the, we have the find array dot C, find array dot CPP. This is the find array dot CPP. So we have this one. Uh, we have included the same file here. And then we see that uh, find array this is a very simple function as we already seen that we are going to search this value uh, for uh, 1 million times and so on so this is the CPP function then we have find array uh, same function in assembly language here we are using C naming convention when we use C naming convention there will be no at the rate sign and so on and it will return one value whatsoever the value in AL whatsoever and this al will be moved in the uh, variable in the main file and so on so if you just go to the find array main so we have find array he header file and so on we just define an array uh, of size 10,000 then we have 1 million loop size we have the sorry we have the size array size of 1 10,000 now we are defining the actual array of one ten thousand elements loop to assign ten thousand random numbers to this array elements and then it will ask you to enter any number so that you can um, uh, perform um, search that you want to search from this array and then it will print the message get the number and then please wait for 10 to for example uh, 70 seconds and so on so this is testing for the C++ function if you see here what is inside the testing for C++ function from here to here first it will get the time and this function time will give you the current time and here for this purpose we are using time.h and then after that uh, we are going to say boolean found is equal to false we are going to repeat this loop for 1 million times and we are trying to find this value 1 million times from 10,000 elements so you will 
you are going to run this multiple thousand I mean thousands of the times um, and then you will find out that how long you can save your time if you are, your program is very long then after that you are getting the new time the current system time and so on and it will print the message same thing happens here for the assembly uh, from here to here uh, assembly language procedures time initial time found is equal false then loop will continue then after this end you will find the time and it will print the time this is uh, I just put it uh, so that it can wait otherwise the console window will just go on so I just save this one right click you have the build customization we already checked this one so there's no problem if you want to see the properties you will find the Microsoft macro assembler so there'll be no problem here just build solution so it's successful I just run this project and then we will see the disassembly and so on so it say uh, enter the value to find it means it has already assigned some values for example if I want to find value 2 so it will print the message that wait please wait uh, this will take between 10 to 70 seconds so what is going to do is it is going to perform a search linear search inside an array of 10,000 lumens and how many times it's going to perform search is like uh, 1 million times it's going to perform search first in C then in assembly so you will see when it will write out the results so in the CPP it took 30 seconds found is equal to 0 and then oh, 7 seconds for the uh, assembly time so now you can find out that you can see how much you can speed up your code so it will ask you that you can put numbers so I can uh, this is real, real it's really remarkable if you see the CPP time is 30 seconds even though it doesn't found uh, any value but it is searching 1000 10,000 times all the elements then it's calling again and so on so this is good to see that your assembly code is really faster than the uh, the uh, C++ code and so on so what we are going to do here I want to run in disassembly mode uh, step by step mode and we'll see the disassembly for example uh, if I want to see the name of this procedure when you are calling this procedure for example find array dot cpp here we have the name for this array when you are calling this find array function so if I say go to disassembly so we have find array here you can see when you are using cpp then the main thing is it will there will be no ampersand sign it's underscore find array simple okay when you are using C if we just go for the uh, this call just go for this call go to disassembly this call has the same convention because we are using C specifier we are using C specifier and so on however if we just go here in the um, here we are using this find array so it will be underscore find array if you are using the C specifier if you want to use here for example in the in the assembly code if you are using not C but you are using STD call and I just save this one now you will find that what is the difference I just turn off this one uh, build project build solution there's problem unresolved external symbol underscore find array why the problem is because when you're writing the code in assembly language and you are using STD call then the problem will be that um, it will be underscores the name of the um, pro procedure app ampersand sign and something so we have to use for example in the head header file underscore strg call and so on so now it will be resolved now it is resolved but you will find the difference you will find the difference when I run this one in 
uh, step by step mode and use the debug uh, go to disassembly for example here this is the C++ version and we are using no convention here We're using simple C uh, C++ so if I just say go to disassembly we have find array this is the call the name of this array uh, sorry the name of this procedure is underscore find array on the other hand if I just go to the next call right click and go to disassembly here you can see underscore ASM find array and there's M F at the rate of sign 12 and so on so be very careful when you are going to uh, use the naming convention um, be careful that the specifier should be similar and so on so for example if I just clean or close raise this CPP uh, the STD call and put C here see here so I just save this one and from the find array dot H I just remove this STD call and just save this one save all build the project so it is successful I just run this one it says just enter the value one two is the value and in the end you will see that uh, how long your assembly code will take and how long will your CPP code will take to find this value from the array of 10,000 elements I am searching for 1 million times and so on so CPP took 19 seconds assembly took 4 seconds this is the difference that you will get uh, now for example if you are going to perform the uh, mathematical computations or maybe you are going to perform scientific computations maybe you are going to perform simulations for the uh, large programs uh, the large networks and so on then just try to uh, make them more um, compatible and then you just try to make them more compact and efficient one and you can save the time so I just close this one so now I will summarize what we did in our uh, in this lecture in lecture number 31st we discussed about the function call overhead and we saw that and there are so many header files there are so many re registers that are going to be read and written uh, on the stack then uh, we have seen that how we can link uh, assembly to the visual C++ programs and we saw that we can use C uh, specifier and then we can use the uh, external specifier and so on and then uh, we saw that how we can optimize the code because uh, there are some loops and inside the loop if we optimize the code then uh, we can get a very good result after that we saw that the uh, find our example how we can use find our example we have seen that there are two find array functions now one function is written in C++ another function is written in assembly language both are optimized ones simple one and so on then we have seen that our assembly function is far more faster than the C++ function the reason is that uh, if you just go to disassembly the C++ function there will be multiple number of registers that will be written uh, on the stack and so on so we have created the project you have seen we have created four projects so this is end of the lecture here you can see the references and inshallah hope to see you in the next lecture till then Allah Hafiz